what's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize Modern Warfare 3 for the best possible performance, tactical advantage, etc, etc. I won't be touching on Windows at all in this guide. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find guides to get the most out of your PC, including a Windows and NVIDIA optimization guides. It's super important to check those out if you haven't already touched on those settings. But if you have, don't worry about it. We'll get right into the game itself now. All right, so in game for Modern Warfare 3, let's head across to the settings in the top right by clicking the cog wheel here, followed by graphics. And this is where we'll start on the display tab. First of all, display mode. For the best input latency and performance, absolutely select full screen exclusive. Borderless, extended window, and windowed are all kinds of windowed mode and usually result in much larger input latency delays, etc. So full screen exclusive is absolutely the best option here. I find that the game gets a little bit unhappy when I'm constantly tabbing in and out when recording. So for now, I'll leave it on borderless. But when you do set it to full screen, you'll get the options for display monitor, where you can change what monitor it's displayed on, refresh rate, which should obviously match whatever your monitor's refresh rate is, for example, 144, 165, etc. And resolution should absolutely be a native resolution of your display. Otherwise, if it's too low, it'll look needlessly blurry. And if it's too high, you'll be rendering pixels you don't actually see, losing performance. Aspect ratio is your preference. VSync should absolutely be turned off for the best input latency, unless you're getting screen tearing where the top and bottom half of your monitor don't match up. Then custom frame rate limit. This is a good section if you're recording, for example, and the game is eating your entire graphics card, leaving OBS and other programs in the background lagging, pausing, and stuttering. If you experience any of that behavior, simply cap your FPS to slightly lower than what FPS you're actually getting in game to leave some of your PC left over for the rest of the programs to use. For me, I limit game play to 300, which is the max that we can get, menu to around 60, just to keep it cooler on the menu, as we don't need to render frames we're not actually really caring about, and out of focus, you can drop pretty much as low as you want, this is your frame rate when you tab out of the game. If you're playing in windowed and the game is still visible, I'd say don't drop this below 30 or 25, if you do, it'll be really jarring and odd. Anyways, scrolling down further, shade is preloading, you can restart it here and get some info about it, but you don't really need to worry about this, you can try doing this after changing all of your graphic settings to a point where you're happy just to make sure everything's optimized for your system. When you're done with this optimization guide, you can come back here, click this, wait for it to finish, and then you should get slightly better performance. Display gamma is your preference. Brightness, once more, if you push the brightness too high, everything will become gray and washed out. So keeping it at 50 and changing the brightness on your monitor is preferable here. Constrain mouse to game window. If you're playing windowed and you flick too quickly, click, you're tabbing out. This is what you need to turn on. It can even happen in full screen mode, though it's less likely. Then focus mode, if you enable this, your other monitors will be blacked out completely, and you can choose the opacity of it here, but personally, I don't have this enabled at all. As the game draws over the other monitors as well on your system, I can imagine that this will slightly lower your FPS as well, so it's probably better to keep it off anyway. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, having this on with an NVIDIA graphics card, should help decrease the latency between mouse movement and seeing the actual pixels moving on your screen. Having it enabled is something you should do pretty much always. You should choose on if you're GPU limited and on plus boost if you're CPU limited. As in, whichever one is slower, that's what you're limited by. Then high dynamic range is your preference. It shouldn't really affect your FPS much at all. But if you have an HDR monitor, you can gain quite a bit of clarity through having this enabled. If you're not sure, leave it on automatic. Otherwise, you can disable it. For now, I'll apply settings and we'll move on to the quality tab at the very top. Starting at the very top, quality presets. This is your preference. Preference, click choose whichever option most suits your PC. You can see a VRAM estimator in the bottom right showing you how much VRAM you have available, how much other apps are using, and how much the game is estimated to use. You can choose one of these options based on how much VRAM you think you'll have available or how much you can use for the game. Extreme says 5,600 megabytes. So if you have a graphics card with more than six gigabytes of VRAM, you can comfortably choose Extreme when it comes to VRAM limitations, but that's not everything. So for the most part, I'd recommend starting at the lower end and working your way up. Minimum is a great place to start. Render resolution should absolutely be kept at 100% and dynamic resolution turned off. Both of these options will be disabled if you choose an upscaling or sharpening method here, such as XESS, DLSS, FSR1 or FSR2.1, as well as image scaling. 
but find that the FX CAS and DLIA are both only really focusing on anti-aliasing rather than upscaling and giving you more FPS. DLIA and CAS are supposed to improve the look of the image using AI, but not actually gain you a ton of FPS on top of it. For that, I'd highly recommend using NVIDIA DLSS or XESS if you have an Intel graphics card, and finally, AMD FSR 2.1 if you're running any graphics card, NVIDIA, AMD, or Intel. FSR is a brilliant choice here, as for me personally, it makes the game look a little bit less blurry compared to DLSS. I haven't tried XESS, and NVIDIA image scaling is something else that I usually default to. It's pretty much a 50-50 of whether I'd choose NVIDIA image scaling or FSR 2.1. Both of these options allow you to lower the resolution of your game and crank it up using AI or other upscaling methods. FSR 2.1 is a brilliant option on pretty much anything. With any one of these options selected, you'll have a preset here where you can choose between quality and performance. The closer to performance you push it, the lower the resolution your game will be. It'll use more AI magic to upscale it, but at a certain point, you'll notice way more artifacting. Text becomes more difficult to read when you're looking around quickly, etc. It does get quite distracting, especially with name tags flying around on top of players. For that, I'd recommend leaving it on ultra quality, if not just quality, for a slight boost in FPS performance, but you can push it more to the performance side if you really need it. Anti-aliasing should be disabled if you use any upscaling, as it's not really necessary. This smooths out jagged edges, and when you're rendering at a smaller resolution using AI to upscale, those jagged edges are removed pretty much anyway. If you have this option enabled, rather choose SMAA T2X, which is the lowest option here, and leave the anti-aliasing quality on the lower end for higher FPS. Yes. You can raise it if you don't like how the jagged edges look around objects, wires, etc., but it's not really necessary. VRAM target, I'd say max out, unless for some reason you're hitting your VRAM limit and your frames are suffering because of it. Then variable rate shading, I'd recommend enabling this as it'll put more effort into making certain parts of the image a higher quality than other parts. It's a good option, albeit a little bit new and probably still quite experimental. It should boost your FPS at least somewhat. Then texture resolution under date under detail details and textures. This completely depends on how much VRAM you have in your system. As you can see, it has a huge impact on the estimated VRAM. If you have over six gigs of VRAM in your system, choose high. If you have anything above three gigs, choose normal. Otherwise, you can choose these lower options if you'd like to really claw some FPS. These are important options here as texture resolution has a huge impact on how the game looks. You should only really lower this if you need to as a last resort, as if you have VRAM available, it's not really gonna cost you any extra extra FPS to have this set to a higher option, but if you're hitting your VRAM limit, it can cause you to tank a huge amount of FPS. So usually the higher end is better. Anisotropic filtering should have a very small impact on your CPU and GPU when it comes to filtering the textures and improving how they look, and it has almost no impact on VRAM. You can leave this on the higher end as it should have a minimal impact on FPS, but you can leave it on low as it shouldn't be too noticeable. Depth of field, I'll absolutely recommend turning this off as it makes the game a lot easier to see what's going on. This is especially important as it's a fast-paced Twitch shooter. Detail quality level, this has to do with the quality of objects and small ground elements such as foliage, rocks, and various decals. This is less important, especially as you're only gonna be focusing on other players. Leave this on low for the best performance. Particle resolution, once more, this is to do with explosions and particles and things like that. It's not a huge impact on how the game looks and feels, so I'd recommend keeping it on the lower end, very low if not low. It's good enough. Bullet impacts, this can be a competitive advantage in some situations, so I'd recommend having this enabled. It'll have more of a CPU impact, so if you're CPU limited, it could cause you to drop a few FPS, otherwise it'll probably be unnoticeably different. Then persistent effects, this has to do with damage left over from explosions and things like that. You can leave this on, it'll have an impact on your VRAM, but other than that, not really much else. It's okay to leave it on and forget about it. If you're clawing for FPS, you can of course turn this off. Shader quality has to do with the lighting on some surfaces and has a slight impact on colorization. This isn't hugely important for the game. I'd recommend keeping this on low as we're not really worried about how the game looks, rather more about how it feels. On demand texture streaming, you can leave this turned on. It'll use extra disk space and of course internet to download higher quality textures. Personally, I've heard of people benefiting FPS and stability wise by having this turned on, even if they're not really 
really downloading any of the textures. If you're on a limited or capped internet connection or your disk is near full, this is a good option to turn off. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter ultimately. You can choose how much you allocate to extra textures. You can give it more or you give it less. And download limits, if you have a capped connection, absolutely enable this and set a suitable download limit here. You can see by hovering over daily download limit how much you've used over the past few days. For example, yesterday in a few hours of playing, I downloaded about 4 gigabytes of textures. Then looking down, local texture stream and quality. This has to do with distant zones on large maps. As you're running around, it'll load different areas of the map at different times as you get closer to them. If you have the game on an SSD, which I would highly recommend, you should leave this option on normal. Then scrolling down to shadow and lighting. This is once again less important as it's a Twitch shooter. We're focusing on people more than objects lying around us. You can set the shadow quality to low if you don't like how jagged very low looks. Shadows are noticeably jagged and distracting on very low. Low or normal are good options here. Screen space shadows is a cheap effect. You can leave this on low without too much FPS being dropped, but you can disable this if you're really clawing them all. Then ambient occlusion has to do with lighting when two objects intersect or interact with each other, creating more depth. I'd recommend leaving this option on for static objects for a better looking game overall. You can enable this for dynamic objects as well, or both for people, characters, vehicles, etc. This is going to be much more costly than just static objects, as this is only really done once for buildings, etc. You can leave the quality on low or maybe normal. It shouldn't be too expensive to run this effect. Low is probably what you'd want if you care about FPS. This will keep the game looking pretty good while not costing too much extra extra in FPS. Then screen space reflections. Once again, this is a cheap effect. I'd recommend leaving it on normal as it adds more realism and depth to the game. Then static reflection quality has to do with objects being reflected on other reflect objects and surfaces. This isn't too important as nothing moving will reflect on them anyway. For the most part, you can leave this on low. It shouldn't really be something you need to worry about. Then environment. This is the last section of quality. Tessellation has to do with hair and things like that and improves the quality of objects and surfaces as you get closer towards them. You can leave this on near, otherwise all, it shouldn't have too much of a performance impact. Terrain memory has to do with VRAM for the most part, even though it doesn't say anything about it in the bottom right. For bigger maps, if you find that you're running out of VRAM or your PC's starting to struggle, this is an option you can lower to min or medium, otherwise leave it on max. It's not going to use more terrain memory if there's not more terrain to load. Volumetric quality, this has to do with fog, clouds, etc. You can leave this on low comfortably. Otherwise, if you're playing the single player campaign and getting into the movements of it, you can leave it on maybe high as it's not so competitive as multiplayer. If you still like how it looks, set it to medium. Otherwise, low for the best raw performance. I'll leave this on maybe medium. Deferred physics quality has to do with the quality of the water and that's pretty much it. There's low, high. It shouldn't really matter. Low is probably the best option here to keep it looking better than off. Weather grid volumes has to do with larger weather effects applied to dynamic objects such as trees, forests, the ocean, bodies of water, etc. I'd recommend leaving this option on low just for more realism. I wouldn't turn it off entirely. Finally, water quality. This only has to do with water and has to do with light rays and light penetrating the water that you can see at the bottom and while you're swimming, as well as wetness for objects that come in contact with this. Default is an okay option here. Caustics has more realistic looking wave movements and things like that. Wave wetness has to do with objects objects being wet when they leave the water, and both of these options improves how water looks and feels quite dramatically. It is a little bit costly when it comes to FPS when you're in the water and getting in and out of it. If you find that you're dropping FPS when entering and leaving and being in bodies of water, this is an option you can drop down to default. Finally, I'll apply my settings and confirm, and you should immediately notice a huge increase in performance in-game. Pretty much we've lowered most of these options except for a specific few to keep the game looking pretty good, but not the best. It's for performance and competitive edge. On the view tab, field of view can affect your performance, but it really doesn't matter. Have this set to whatever you're most comfortable with. On ultra wide monitors, you may want this option on the much higher end. ADS field of view, if you find that you're dropping FPS when you zoom in and out of your scope, set this to independent and that won't happen anymore. This is your preference and right below this weapon and vehicle field of view, you can change this to be narrow or wide based on whatever you like. Usually, I'm pretty sure there used to be images explaining what these were in Modern Warfare 2. 
maybe they'll be added in Modern Warfare 3 in the future. These are once again your preference. World Motion Blur I'd absolutely recommend turning off as it makes the game a lot more easy to see what's going on, especially when spinning around, flicking, etc. If you suffer from motion sickness, motion blur is an option you should absolutely disable anyway. Weapon motion blur has to do with your weapon blurring when you're moving around, sprinting, etc. It's usually much less noticeable and shouldn't really cost you FPS wise, but it does make the game look quite a bit better. You can leave this on or off, it's your preference. Film grain, I'd absolutely recommend turning off for the best possible visibility in game, but if you like the scenic look that it has, you can leave it on the default of 25, maybe a little bit lower. If you're recording and you have film grain enabled, it is going to force your encoder to work a little bit harder, which could put more strain on your CPU or GPU based on how you're recording or streaming on your system if you're playing on the same system. This is an option I'd recommend lowering if you're struggling with that, otherwise you can leave it where it is. First person camera movement, you can leave it on the default for the most shake, but having this set to less is probably a good idea for a competitive edge. The same goes for motion sickness. Spectator camera, this is your preference. You can change it in game. For me personally, I leave it on game perspective as a default. Finally, inverted flashbang. You can make the screen go dark instead of lighter with this option enabled if you suffer from photosensitivity or you just don't like the look of flashbangs blinding you in a dark room. You can turn this on and it'll do the opposite. Pretty cool. Personally, I don't mind, so I'll leave it off. Then on the audio tab over here, audio mix, you can set to whatever you're using. This mainly has to do with dynamic range ranges, the bottom options have a higher dynamic range than the upper options, essentially meaning that louder sounds have a much bigger difference from quieter sounds at a high dynamic range, so it could be a competitive advantage to have it set to your headphones or PC speaker so you can hear footsteps much more easily than the higher options. It may not be the best for cinematic audio quality and blah blah, but if you're someone who cares about being competitive, having this set to the higher up options on this list, such as PC speaker, is what you want. The rest of these is pretty much your preference. The voice chat, obviously somewhat important, as well as microphone, absolutely leave this to push to talk. No matter what device you're on, nobody wants to hear you shifting around in your chair or smacking your keyboard. There's an option to test your microphone here to make sure that it's working properly and help you adjust the rest of the settings above this. Finally, at the very bottom, mono audio should be turned off unless you need it for some reason. If it's on for some reason, you won't be able to tell what's coming from the left or the right, etc. Reduce tinnitus sound is an important one. If you hate the noise from concussion and flash grenades, this is what you need to turn on and it won't be so annoying. That's that high-pitched wee sound. The rest of these options are your preference. And finally, you can mute it when it's minimized if you so need this option. Anyways, that's really it. We've now fully optimized the in-game settings. Once again, if you'd like to optimize your system further, in the description down below, you'll find an NVIDIA Windows optimization guides. Without further ado, let's hop into a mosh pit game just to see what kind of frames we get. And there we go. We're on Rust. Obviously not the most demanding of maps, but I'll take out something. And you can see I've definitely messed up somewhere i think graphics quality there we go render resolution has dropped to 50 it needs to be on 100 percent there we go and the game should look infinitely better for some reason upscaling and sharpening was turned off hmm, okay well it seems to have undone some of my settings anyways quality fsr 2.1 apply there we go this game looks a lot better and performance is pretty good i'm sitting at a solid 100 fps with these options on a 3080 ti at 2k resolution not the best the best but it's pretty good nonetheless for what we have currently some areas jumping to 120 fps okay i'll pause the game options and graphics now i'll turn it from fsr to nis i'll leave the resolution at ultra quality and everything as is apply you can see the difference here it still looks pretty good fps 105 and some areas 120 so pretty much no difference between this and fsr just that i think text is a little bit easier to read in fsr 2.1 finally if we disable upscaling completely as such to run at perfectly native resolution this is how the game looks it's roughly the same, a little bit sharper, text is definitely easier to read, and FPS was sitting at around 90-ish, some areas, yeah, 94, 96. It's a small drop, but if you're running at lower FPS to begin with, running FSR is a great option here. If you're really clawing for more FPS, you can come back here and lower some more options, but for the most part, this is pretty good. The game should immediately be a lot more clear. You should be able to see into the distance as well. The only thing that could blow that up would most likely be motion blur, depth of field, and if you have your upscaling options pushed a little bit too far towards the performance side versus quality. That's really it. You now know how to optimize Modern Warfare 3 for the best possible performance, so hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.